and we're live. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the EMF Summit. I am delighted that you're able to join us today because we have a very, very special guest. He's really doing something. I've, I've packed the schedule and managed to, to fit him in because I've had so many people telling me, you have to talk to this man, you have to talk to this man, and I have talked to him, and I know this is something that I want to share with you. So without any further ado, we've got a lot of material to cover here. Join me. We're going to warmly welcome Curtis Bennett. Curtis, thank you so much for joining us here today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Okay, I have a question for you. Why are you here, and why should we listen to you? And the reason you should have me here is this, is it exposure codes actually admit that they're missing causation and the mechanisms linking the frequencies to adverse health effects. So our job was uh, to look for that oversight and to find that oversight in safety code six and represent it. And we did find that and represent that and present that to Health Canada. And that causal link, linking the frequencies to adverse health effects is critical uh, to your summit. It's an absolute complement uh, 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 to the other professionals there. We're not competing with anybody. Radio frequency EMFs are an electrical interaction first. Yeah, well, this is one of the things that Ole Johansson said. He said, you know, we've all got to be on the same page on this. We've all got to be working together. So the work that you do actually substantiates the work that the other researchers and so on and advocates are bringing forward. And, you know, this is something to understand because you do ruffle feathers, Curtis. You know, you really do ruffle feathers. You're not the most diplomatic attack in, in the pack here. But you're wonderful. You're doing really wonderful things. So do you think that this causation that you're finding, do you think that this is going to make a difference with, for example, the WHO, turning it from a, a, a 2B carcinogen to an actual carcinogen? Is this going to change that? Not only is it going to change it here, and here's the importance of this on, on, on my part here. Um, with the work that we do, um, for, first off, I should get into this part of it here. You know, my background is I'm, a, I'm an interprovincial journeyman electrician. And then the reason I did that education specific is because electrical engineers do not do what electricians do. They design electrical systems. We design electrical systems. They are not qualified to install them, maintain them, or work on them in any capacity. And I didn't want to leave i got to interrupt you there because there's actually people that have 15 minutes of training that are going out and installing these smart meters. What's that all about? This is part of that, that it never, ever should have happened. And that was actually part of our extensive investigation into why that happened. And we're going to get into that when we talk about smart meters and that danger. But when I talk about being an interprovincial journeyman electrician, I did that because my background is I've worked on heavy industry, oil refineries, offshore, uh, underground, lumber mills, mines, buildings, uh, hospitals, education. My second uh, education is building engineering. And the reason that I picked that is building engineering is everything specific to what we're designing energy systems for. And it's a, con it's a building construction from contracts to completion. Now what I did differently is I designed that education specifically to complement a 35-year background uh, uh, as a thermal radiation consultant, which is seeing what you would call non-thermal effects. And I just want to share this before you go off with this is that, you know, we have consulted for industry over 35 years. All industries save them billions of dollars. We are not lobbyists, even in this issue. This was reported, as a matter of fact, specific to what you're talking about. We did this to warn our governments, as we've done for 35 years, to save money, save insurers money, save economy. You know, that's interesting because when you talk about working for insurance companies, one of the things that the insurance companies are doing is they are not insuring people that come down with a, a, a brain tumor from their cell phone and stuff like that. So they're getting pretty smart on that, right? Insurance companies are going to get a lot uglier than people think they are because insurance companies, when I started working with them, here's what they tell you from day one. We want to save money. And so you can imagine our, our job is, is working with them in industry at the same time specific to saving them money. And that's another issue related to exactly what you're talking about. Once insurance companies find out about this blanket radiation uh, that they've admitted that is happening, you, insurers aren't, aren't going to insure anybody. 
for any of these issues because it could be absolutely relevant to uh, this radio frequency bombardment. Wow, you know, it really makes you wonder. And, and you know, if insurance companies, as far as I'm concerned, they've got a batch of actuaries looking at the probability of all these things and so on, and their job is to save money for sure. You know, so if, if they're not insuring people, obviously there's a real danger happening here. And, you know, I, I'd like to, I, I put together a few of, of the slides from the information that you've got, the best that I could fit onto this screen. And, you know, I'd like to just look at some of those slides so people can get an idea of what thermal imaging is and how effective it is. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. And before you start that, I want people to know this. And here's something with this language with radio frequency, uh, EMFs. You always hear and even exposure codes. When I read the exposure code during the investigation, it said, we don't understand non-thermal effects and that they're not, they're not really understood. There are no such thing as non-thermal effects. Temperature for me and temperature for us starts at minus 496 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 273 degrees Celsius, where you get initial uh, electron excitation producing heat. We are temperature specialists specific to this issue. Okay, okay, that's cool. It's, it's, it's technical, but it's cool. And we want everybody to be able to understand the technical aspect of this in, in a simple layman's terms. So that's imagine, why we put together these, these slides, okay? So you're right. you, you imagine this for what you just said. Yeah. The world's academia, and what you're going to show here is that progressive. The world's academia is effectively blind to temperature. And what you're going to see here is accurate temperature imaging, except this is the most advanced in the world and actually lectured at the highest accredited level of uh, medical education. And not only is it advanced, Okay, guys, but it's also something that requires a great level of expertise to do. So if people go and they try to do this thermograph imaging, it, it is often exceeds their level of expertise because they don't have the actual training. So that's the reason that, that Curtis is actually an adjunct uh, professor. He's going in and he's teaching integrative physicians, integrative health physicians how to use this technology so that they're able to understand the complexity behind it because, you know, it's very, very tricky. So let's just look. I'd like to, uh, what would you, can we look at first? I'm going to look at sort of like slides kind of in the order that you've given them to me. Uh, I, I would do that because it's, people will actually take that personally with this. So, okay, uh, good. This, okay, go okay so let's, let's talk this one over first, okay? Talk to me about this. I'm going to leave this up on the screen and you can tell me about this. This is kind of important everybody because it's dealing with the smart meters and how they can be uh, causing fires without even showing it, without us knowing. So Curtis, tell us about this one. Here, here's, well, here's something again, you've heard that uh, people say, listen, the connections there, meter bases aren't catching fire, it's not happening, and BC Hydro has reported this, this has been reported around the world with this. Well, here's the reality, and the imagery you're looking at here, this, this type of imaging is specific to connection issues. Electrical distribution of any kind load cycle. Connections get loose, they get corroded. It's a regular part of electrical maintenance. Now, something that they would do, industry, refineries, gas, oil, Petro Canada, it didn't matter who they were, they would actually hire us to look at their electrical systems. And we had to sell that first to show them we could show them temperature beyond their uh, uh, visible spectrum and that they could see electrical failure prior to it happening so they could fix it ahead of time and everybody saves money. So, so you can see, yeah, I gotta interrupt you here because I wanna, ahead. I wanna show people what they're looking at. You can see that the, the, you can see the red area here, this red area, that's the heat that's showing up and it means that this little connection right here is faulty. So this is a place where there's a danger for a fire. And this is what Curtis is able to show people. Can we go to the forest fires, Curtis? Just before you get off this one, and, and this is this. And for people to understand this, anybody that wants to dispute this information has to understand this. This has been done in industry for 35 years through that pioneering process. This has saved the world probably hundreds of billions of dollars and lots of lives related to this. And that's why with these smart meter uh, meter bases and these people you talk about with 50 minutes experience, I don't care if it's two weeks experience, I don't care what it is. We never, ever, ever 
would allow unqualified electrical professionals to work on this on a meter base that has never been maintained since it's been on the building. Oh, yeah. Those components are so fragile that even touching them, I would not pull a meter base off the way I watch those guys do that. Okay, it's another so thing, Curtis, too, another thing that they're doing is uh, they're not turning off the power in the house. So, you know, they're doing it with the power going, which is absolutely a, a heinous crime. You know, it's, it's like really bad news. Okay, but I want to get through everything. So let's move okay. on to the next slide that we've got. Okay, and this slide is kind of important because it's dealing with forest fire, okay? And the thing is that in forest fires, there was a forest fire, a big one in Kelowna, where both Curtis and I are living, and uh, they, they had a, a forest fire, and they couldn't see where the center of the forest fire was and stuff. So they called Curtis. Curtis came in to show them what's going on. So talk to us about that, Curtis. Here's why this is even more important, what you said. And, the and when I talk about my job, my job in leading in this capacity, I'm, we're a much bigger group than that, and uh, international associates and people that we work with across the board, including fire departments. My job in leading that is bigger than myself because when that lightning strike happened uh, in 2003 in Peachland and the fire started, media and forestry started reporting immediately that they couldn't see the fire because of the smoke. We contacted them and said, listen, we trained our first fire department years ago. Do you want to see through the smoke? We can track the direction of the fire through the smoke. Well, they laughed it off and said, listen, it can't be done. So we went after forestry and said, please let us help. We went through the premier's office and said, please let us help. We're not looking to sell you anything. This fire is going to interface with Kelowna. And what we ended up doing is, listen, they just, uh, it wasn't a jurisdiction of Kelowna at that time. So... The forestry and, and uh, the government did absolutely nothing. Seven days later, before it interfaced with Kelowna and crosses that property line, now we had a jurisdictional issue where Kelowna was taken over by the, uh, I think there was a, a, a disaster uh, declared or some, something where they took over the jurisdiction of the municipality. So all of a sudden, we're just kicked out of this loop where they said, Curtis, we can't do anything. Forestry's taken over. We couldn't deal with forestry. So on August 21st, one of the worst days of my life is we're in Kettle Valley. We've been told to stand down. The fire is getting closer to Kelowna. They didn't even want to evacuate the people at the time. No, they, did, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't start anything. And this is what was horrible for us. You can see in the picture in the bottom, there's the helicopter and there are the buildings. There were people in carriages, put, grandmas pushing babies in carriages and men and women standing on the roads waiting to see what was going on and not seeing what was coming at them 300 feet per minute. So it came to such a critical stage for me that uh, I said, it's here. In my group, I said, listen, it's here. An RCMP cruiser came by and I literally jumped out in front of him and I said, you've got to get him out of here. It's here. And so what he did is he, he, we showed him what was happening. Uh, actually, a helicopter flew in with a bucket and 30 seconds later, he came out. We both just looked at each other and said, it's here. He said, we've got to get things going. Will you go down to the fire hall and, and offer your services? I said, of course we will. But the important part is, and again, we're, we don't do a blame game thing here, but the importance of my job, again, is people said, this in initiated the evacuation of 15,000 people, and the answer is yes. That's our jobs as first responders. Okay, which is answers. great. You are saving lives. And let's yes. look at water now i want people to understand how this how effective this is what you're doing okay so when we're looking at this we have an aerial groundwater sourcing can you explain what we're looking at here here again you'll 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 you can appreciate the technicality of my job when forestry uh, hydrologists uh, uh, and, and the whole group came forward and said listen groundwater is considered nature's hidden treasure you imaged it two years ago, and I said, we did that a long time ago. What's the big deal? And me being that anal, I didn't understand what groundwater was. And the, but now I do because I can't catch any fish anyways. But all we did was determine that there was going to be a temperature difference at different times of the year. And they said, could you image groundwater? And so we just worked on the application and said yes. So the importance of professionals seeing that, biologists seeing that, can't be overstated. That bright white area and you can see the scale to the side of that that's groundwater at the edges of the riparian areas this is groundwater upwellings within river systems we saw them in fields but the point of our our job is is we isolate that for biologists for forestry we don't tell them what to do 
we're the temperature specialists. Okay, so what is groundwater? Groundwater is here are these here are these lakes and uh, uh, up water upwellings within river systems. This is where fish spawn. It's kind of a temperature highway that even during the, the different times of the season, water can get too cold. The fish will actually sit in this warmer water at this time of the year and stay around that area. And okay. this is where they actually spawn as well. So we're and not even, talking we're, about flooding here. No, no, okay. we're talking about groundwater. Here is this hidden resource that we're trying to protect and we just couldn't see it. So this is how our technical work moves forward and just okay. giving the I, site I still professors. don't get it. I don't get what you got a brook running along. I mean that's groundwater. What do you need? You've got, coal, you've got water uh, from underneath that river system pushing up from under the ground. Oh, I get it now. Okay. And I so get this it. is what's actually filling the river system when the other uh, systems aren't working. Got it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next one. Now, this one here, this slide here, is something that is very, very handy, okay? What we're looking at here is one of these brown spider bites, which are really, really not very fun to get, okay? They're very poisonous. And the thing is that this can be used for Ebola. So it's possible that people walking out of the airport can be imaged right away, and they can see whether they have Ebola or not. So this is kind of cool. Talk to us about this one, Curtis. Well, here's the important part of this one. Again, everything we do is temperature. Now, if everybody thinks of this, just like Star Trek or just like Stardust put together, everything in existence is atoms and molecules, electrons, energy. Everything is vibrating. Everything in existence is moving. So when medicine actually came to us and said, uh, we want to interrogate you, I said, uh, I want to interrogate you. And uh, so we actually met in the United States, and we went back and forth, and they said, how did you see inflammation? I said, it's elevated temperature. I said, please tell me that you can see uh, uh, inflammation, and they said, no. I said, with injury or infection, there's an inflammatory response. What percentage of the time? And they said, 100. And I said, and you're effectively blind to that. And they said, yes. So what we did, and this is, again, I'm not trying to simplify this, it's a lot of years and a lot of work and a lot of professionals working on this. We just developed these very simple, simple imaging applications to source inflammation so that doctors can see this immediately in their office. It drives me crazy that when doctors said, you're kind of angry with us. And I said, inflammation's your business and you can't see it. I said, I can't imagine being a blind electrician or, or blind at anything. But the purpose of this is, is that you give them the ability to see Here's an inflammation. Here's that initial injury. And then you can see in the second image, 24 hours later, here's the progression of infection just over a 24-hour period. And the point is, of course, that this can be brought forward. And the point to the radio frequency issue is this. When they said they can't determine if people are hit by these EMFs, of course you can. Anytime magnetism or electromagnetism gets close to an atom or molecule or electrons, it causes excitation. It's very basic uh, uh, heat, heat principles. Okay. Now, I want to look at something that is dealing with global warming type of thing. What do you mean by this? This is showing, I think it's showing, the heat leaking out of the house. Am I correct about this? No, you're, you're wrong. But here, here's the important part with this education. And again, people need to understand this. Even my double education as an electrical professional, electron flow, uh, designing magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, everything on the periodic table, uh, building engineering, uh, uh, everything, we calculate things to 6, 10, 12 decimal points. We were blind to temperature. So even when we designed buildings for temperature, we couldn't see it. We signed it off as compliant with code. Now, here's the importance with this for people to understand. Energy companies and utilities are very concerned about what's going on with energy waste. Global warming is very real, which means this. Weather is the simple interaction of cold and warm air with water vapor. So if we add heat, we're going to change weather. So the whole idea, for, as far as sustainability goes, is that we're supposed to design buildings, design development, so that we blend within nature. We don't impose on the atmosphere or the environment. Here's the importance of this. Environment Canada. It's the government of Canada that passes on what they call regional climatic data through building code. Now, I know this, some of this is technical, but it's important for the ones that are going to be listening to this. Now, that climatic data, as an example, says this. In Kelowna, 
The design temperatures for buildings are minus 20 Celsius to simulate the coldest time of the year, plus 33 Celsius to simulate the hottest time of the year. Now we design and insulate that building to accommodate that load. We design the energy systems to accommodate that load. Now the back of the code says this, watch out for solar radiation. Now when we were asked to look at climate change, I was as skeptical as anybody in the world saying, what the heck is this? A man couldn't make a mess out of this. And then I heard more about urban heat islands. What we ended up doing is we ended up imaging buildings in seven provinces in 26 states to show what wrote solar EMFs. This is why EMFs are not to be messed around with. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Because here's the importance. Building code says watch out for solar EMFs, which means this. If you put absorbent exterior uh, material on the exterior buildings, that is subject to excitations, very absorbent, high emissivity, and guess what? You cause excitation, and that building will generate heat. Now, you imagine this right here. This image you're looking at here, this is January in Kelowna. There's snow on the ground. It's wintertime. And it says right here that it's 39 degrees Fahrenheit outside. That's what the weather station is reporting. That's what everybody's reporting. The building itself, because of solar interaction with that building, that dark material, is 155 degrees Fahrenheit without emissions being produced. So this is heating the atmosphere and contributing to, to, to this climate change issue. And the reason they want to put in smart meters and the reason this is important is this. Is your smart meter going to address what you see in this building? And the answer is no. Okay, and the smart meter does a lot of other things we don't really like either. Well, you, so, we'll be getting to that. Okay, now we're going to look at, at uh, this is very interesting because this is an ex example of extremely low frequency. Okay, that's ELF. This is 60 hertz, which is what we have in our electrical system in North America, and it's causing an electrical fire. Okay, now when you look at the lower picture, everything looks honky-dory. It looks like it's perfectly fine. But when you get into the thermal guys stuff, Curtis is showing us a different picture entirely. So let's let's talk about this one, Curtis. And here, here are the importance of this one. You can see the date at the top of this, and the reason this is important to you. You can see 2002. This is work we did for industry and their insurers at the same time. Their insurance companies actually say, listen, you will hire these guys, or you will hire these types of uh, consultants to work on this. And here's why. When... Health Canada, Industry Canada, and other professionals are saying, um, listen, we don't know if EMFs do anything. We don't know if they interact with people. We don't know what they do. That's absolute nonsense. EMFs interacting with anything are going to cause problems and can cause problems depending on installation. And here's this. Typically, again, here's my job in leading this is when we're expecting this electrical system here, um, there were no switches, so they didn't even want to open up the gear. They said, there's nothing to look at here. And I said, I want to make sure that you've got, you've got single conductors here. I want to make sure you put an insulating board in the top of that so that those 60 hertz EMFs can't interact with that steel cabinet. So as soon as you open it up, no. There's no insulating board. So those 60 hertz electromagnetic fields are expanding and collapsing. They're inducing eddy currents. You've actually got metal trying to change direction 180 degrees. Uh... 120 times per second, and because it can't do that, you generate heat. So if you look at the temperature scale here, you can actually see those two uh, parallel conductors on the right-hand side. There's more load, but you can see that these are actually generating heat with that gear where it's going to cause catastrophic failure of the insulation and a ground fault at this particular area would have blown up the place and uh, caused unrealized problems and probably loss of life and fires and everything else. And again, this is just part of the important technical job that we do in isolating this because their electrical professionals fixed it. This is actually one of those things where this is a horrible inconvenience where I didn't feel good. I, I didn't, uh, these guys, too bad for them. If this would have been done properly the first time, that's a $100 insulating board that could have gone on the top of there. But because they didn't do the installation properly, they've got a, uh, they've got a heck of a job to fix that. That's why it's so important with the smart meters that are going in that they're done correctly, although it's much better to go back to analog, I believe. So now let's well, look at the... Uh, uh, one more thing with this stuff here, and this is, again, the same thing, too. People think this, and here's an assumption. 
dirty electricity when we talk about this inside walls. When wires are clumped together, uh, even, this is what shocked us even as young apprentice electricians that we started our electricity with one wire and we showed this electromagnetic field outside the wire. As soon as we went to put a second wire in there, the instructor said, guess what? It, when wires are together, the lines of the electromagnetic flux actually cancel each other out. The EMFs cancel each other out. It's single power lines that are dangerous. Well, we've had a single power, a single power lines. We've had a lineman kill working 70 feet away from a, a live line working on a dead line because it was running parallel. You know, somebody made a mistake and, and it killed them. Single power lines are dangerous. And, and also, guess what? The smart meters are effectively just uh, grotesquely dangerous. Wow. Okay. So now here we've got a double slide going on. Okay. Now, on the left, we have a German manufactured suit. And then on the right, we have how they are testing the standard absorption rate now. So I'd like you to address both of these, if you wouldn't mind. Well, here, here's how I want to address this. And again, when I was asked to actually look at the exposure codes related to this, you know, I told them right, right away, I said, listen, you can't do this with Wi-Fi. It was regarding Simcoe County and schools when they were just being dismissed. And I said, you can't do that. You're putting children and teachers inside that electrical circuit. And uh, here's the importance of this when you do this. The guy on the left-hand side is a telecom worker. Now, this guy's working on microwaves and antennas, and, and mind you, he's close to them, so it's concentrated, and guess what? You want to protect yourself, or those will hurt him, they will burn him, and they will kill him. But here is the reality. Is your child wearing that to school? Are you wearing that in your home? Are people with smart meters wearing that in their home? Is your baby wearing that? Is a fetus wearing that? You know, it's ridiculous that... Uh, what's happened with this and here's why. Here's what telecom workers are wearing on the left hand side to protect themselves. Do you see that plastic head? And I and I and I, again I say this because it really makes me angry. This is called a SAM phantom model. Now the specific absorption rate is the is 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 the test that they're using uh, uh, for the limits of human exposure. So imagine this the specific absorption rate is actually an admission of guilt. You admit we're absorbing energy but why and how. So to dig into exposure codes and contact Health Canada and go into the radiology guys where I talked to Eric LeMay, and here's a radiology guy. And I said, when you guys do these tests, cell phone manufacturers have to submit their phones to you for testing. He said, yes. So you can see that bracket on that cell phone. It's held out as per manufacturer specs, away from the head. It's on that bracket. Now you can see that black hose in the top of that that's actually a temperature probe, and there's a hole in the top of that where they're pouring uh, uh, a salt water solution or any type of liquid solution. Quite frankly, to me, it doesn't really matter at all. So when I looked at this and I talked to Eric, I said, how many antennas were talking to that cell phone when you did that test? And he said, oh, we didn't include the cell phones. We didn't include the antennas. Well, leaving the antennas out is like leaving a gun out in a shooting. You can't do that. You're only talking about the end-use device on a wireless circuit. The circuit starts where the guy on the left is. He's working that, whether those antennas are going up someplace else, those antennas are talking to smart meters. Those antennas, uh, our routers, are talking to, to, to uh, computers. Uh, antennas are talking to cell phones, but you've got this wireless circuit. And it's important for people to understand this. The difference between a wired circuit and a wireless circuit is this. A wired circuit is insulated. It's a known conductor. We know everything about that conductor, everything that there is, everything about the insulation. It would drive people crazy how technical and how anal that is. A wireless circuit is dangerous and requires all consideration because there is no insulation. You are not insulated, and everything without exception is insulated that is inside those electromagnetic fields and being hit by them is effectively inside that circuit. Now where radio frequency EMFs are typically dangerous is this. It's not like a remote control where you tell somebody, hey, get out of the way of the television, you're blocking my signal. These frequencies go through you. These frequencies are going through people, going through a mom, going through a fetus. And imagine this or this. You see that test on the right hand side? The reason, another reason it irritates me so much as well is when I was a registered intervener at the BC uh, 
or pardon me, the Fortis BC application uh, for wireless smart meters. It was just shameful to watch. Uh, here's BC. Here, here's uh, here's Fortis BC using a plastic head, using that plastic head to radiate Kelowna, to radiate the Okanagan, to do what they're doing, to use a plastic head that doesn't have health. So when they say that you know there are no reported health effects, where do you see any health with that thing? It doesn't have a brain, it doesn't have eyes, it doesn't have ears, doesn't have nerves, doesn't have cells, doesn't have frequencies, doesn't have anything. It's scientific garbage. And the idea that this is the science that they're using, and here's the unfortunate thing about that for everybody. We do not have electrical codes that say, Curtis, people are being electrocuted and dropping like flies, but you guys keep doing what you're doing. We do not have building codes that say buildings are falling down. All of you guys just keep doing what you're doing. To have an exposure code that says we're missing the causal link in biological plausibility, but will it, that, will it, will it, will it change the code once we receive peer-reviewed science and if deemed necessary? Well, that isn't peer-reviewed science. That's just, quite frankly, garbage. But here's the bottom line for me. When I actually looked at this, I never realized it was a code that was missing. And uh, uh, at that time, it was an error omission. And uh, but guess what? It's missing that error omission. And here's that sad reality: September 14th of 2010, causation was reported to Health Canada uh, as the jurisdictional authority in Canada, linking radio frequency EMFs to adverse health effects. You can't leave routers out of classrooms. You can't electrocute babies in classrooms. You can't radiate entire cities. For me, and Mark Warren is an engineer for Forest BC. For him, when I'm cross-examining their experts and for them to be angry with me and saying, we take offense to you saying we're going to irradiate people and hurt them. I said, is your coverage area 17,000 square kilometers? And he said, yes. Are you going to cover 17,000 square kilometers? You imagine this, a 17,000 square kilometer wireless circuit with everything in it. And he said yes. And he also admitted that they did not inform municipalities. They did not tell anybody. And it was during that application we found out that they were allowed to bypass all regulatory process. Wow. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me because somebody contacted me recently and uh, they they are actually creating um, some very very interesting uh, electrical things to to help as capacitors and so on to get rid of the the circuit load or the dirty electricity and so on. And um, th this man contacted me, and he's a fairly young man, and he said, well, he went to his doctor, and his whole thing that he was creating all the equipment he was creating originally he's got a whole line of equipment was to protect the electrical equipment. And so he went to his doctor and his doctor said to him, uh, you know, uh, is this, is this uh, dangerous, the, the EMF radiation and so on? Uh, you know, is it dangerous for your equipment? And he said, oh yes, definitely, certainly is. We have to be very careful and protect our equipment. And he said, well, uh, do you think then that the human body is an, is an electrical system? And he said, well, yes, it is. And he said, so let me put this forward to you. The human body is the most complex electrical system of all. There's parts of it that we don't yet understand. Do you not think that if you're protecting your equipment because it's an electrical system from, from electromagnetic radiation, you might want to consider protecting the most complex system of all the human body and that caused this guy to like totally shuffle his thinking and and then he started working on on things to actually help protect people so that's just a little insert that i thought was sort of interesting but i would like to uh no first of all what do you think about that well here here's what's interesting with that now when you talk about protecting electrical equipment this is something we do always you know um even, even I've said this, and people need to understand this, why these EMFs are even that dangerous regarding this is that we'll do everything in the world to protect electrical systems. One job that I had at a particular time was working at the Inuvik airport, and that job was simply to take all the rusty equipment, 
laying out in their airport. We actually sanded it off so that we could get a good connection. And we grounded everything just so we could supply a path to ground if something did develop a charge. So protecting equipment is important. But when it comes to this, you know, there's dirty electricity two different ways. One is dirty electricity from the meter itself. And the other is they left out the rollers, antennas, and blanket radiation creating this dirty circuit that's got rocks, people, babies, cars, trucks, industry, and everything else in it. So it, it, it's just a, such a complex issue, but you're, you're right that it's very important, and we're supposed to protect people, and, and we're just not doing a good job. Okay. okay, let's look at another one. All right, now we're looking at the grid, the, the so-called smart grid, which even, even the Curtis, the... Uh, a uh, retired head of the CIA, I guess, said that uh, it was not such a smart grid at all because it really leaves a lot of vulnerability for hackers and so on to penetrate and to actually be able to spy right in our living rooms, to be able to turn off our heat, to be able to do all kinds of stuff. So tell me, uh, what's going on with this slide? Here's why this slide is so important. You remember the plastic head from the last one? That's yep. an example of the specific absorption rate that they're using um, for the limits of human exposure for testing. Now, did you see with that plastic head as an example, or any SAM Phantom model, I don't care whatever they're using, you don't see the rest of the grid. It's not incorporated in that equation. But here's BC Hydro is relying on the specific absorption rate, but the specific absorption rate didn't include the grid. They are supplying you the error in safety code 6. They are supplying you the reason that this shouldn't happen in the first place because blanket radiation of buildings like this, exactly what you said, it's not just privacy issues. Those EMFs are going through walls and roofs. They're going through people. You're causing adverse health effects, and we'll get into those biological effects with this. But even more importantly with this, we design MRI chambers uh, just to stop radio frequency EMFs uh, or, or electromagnetic interference. We design buildings because people don't want to spend the same money they do on an MRI chamber otherwise. We don't design buildings to withstand this type of bombardment. So there's a part of a Canadian, Canadian building code called uh, vibration, which is 4.1.3.6. BC Hydro... Here's just one example. BC Hydro can't do this. What they're going to do with this is they'll cause those buildings to compromise 4.1.3.6 of BC building code. And when those EMFs go into those walls and through those walls and through those fire separations, let's just pretend that we're going to use 900 megahertz as an example. 900 megahertz is 900 million cycles per second. And this is this is actually represented to a structural engineer here engineer here in Kelowna on a high rise here that those 900 megahertz radio frequency EMFs going through those walls are going to expand and through those people are going to expand and collapse 1.8 billion times per measurable second that's going to happen 3600 times per hour 86,400 times per day you're going to have these violent oscillations of the building. And Andrew Mikrowski, which is so amazing to talk about the work that he's done with this, we talked a couple of weeks ago and he talked about working for an engineer and there was no rebar. The concrete was dust and this is this. Now I don't know if you can see my hand here, but if you took a little double A battery like this, you look at a double A battery, a double A battery's got a plus on the on the top and a minus on the bottom. So when these 900 megahertz are expanding and collapsing, they're going positive and then negative 1.8 billion times a second. So you imagine this. If we could physically flip this 1.8 billion times per second, 180 degrees, that's what's happening inside those wall systems, which you're going to have accelerated corrosion of buildings, infrastructure. And here's the most important part. It's not that municipalities agreed with this. They didn't tell anybody. Imagine hearing this application that the BC legislature entrusted BC Hydro as energy experts to move forward with this. So what it meant is this. They didn't get engineers to sign off on this or academia or insurers, municipalities or anybody. They just move forward thinking they're installing meters, which there's nothing the matter with a meter when you've got those radio frequency capabilities and that blanket bombardment, you know, 
our, our planet in migration works off a magnetic field, not an electromagnetic field. So okay. this is just an admission of guilt. Yep, and when we're looking at this, okay, when we're looking at this diagram here, okay, you'll notice that one of these houses is the relay. Okay, so all it's collector, it's a collector, their smart meter. So those guys are getting extra zap. You know, and that's a, a, another really major health concern for that little black house. The people living in that little black house have an even higher amount of EMF radiation than the other ones. And another aspect to consider as well is that it is cumulative. So what's happening a lot of times is that, from what I'm understanding with the people I'm interviewing and the things, the research I'm doing, is that you can already have a house full of gadgets and toys. You can have your smart meters, your tablets, your cell phones, your this, your that, and you have a lot of exposure to EMF radiation. Then all of a sudden, you add that smart meter on the house and bling, it throws you over the edge and you become very ill. There's a lot of people talking about that. So let's go now to uh, looking at the effect that it has on plants. Now, here, here, one thing I want to say about that too, and, and, and this is so critically important, even uh, as a re no, even as a registered intervener for Fortis, or pardon me, for the West Kootenays and the Fortis BC application, I was there in the best, best interest of the utility, BC Hydro, uh, constituents and all of the above because of this. You imagine this blanket radiation of these buildings compromising building codes. Once, they, once that building reaches a point where you can't occupy it anymore, you're not going to get insurance, you're not going to have a mortgage, and BC Hydro is going to have a liability besides the reckless endangerment of people with this. So, and let's move to the next slide because it's just all-encompassing. Okay. And, you know, that's something I'm, I'm still not 100% clear on, on the other one, but we'll get, we'll, I'll dig down into that in a second. Let's just go to this slide first. Okay, so here we're looking here, here, at... Here, this is, this is, these are the pictures. Now, the pe people have seen this before, and some students in Europe actually did some tests with some radiation tests using a router, and they used watercress. So what they did is they put them in a controlled environment. The left side shows the watercress that wasn't irradiated with Wi-Fi frequencies. The right side shows the irradiated watercress. Do you notice the difference? Yep, and the one on the right was right beside the wireless router, which a lot of students are sitting right beside the wireless routers in the classrooms. So, you know, consider that. Look at what it's doing. We, not, not even just consider that. Here is a horrible thing. And listen, here's the thing for me technically. Listen, uh, uh, I don't, people would, I don't have a personal opinion. They don't want to hear what I'd have to say personally about this kind of stuff. But <laughs> technically speaking, technically speaking, you imagine me representing this to Fortis. And here's why this is important as well. When Fortis did, um, Fortis, the Fortis application was passed and rubber stamped because the BC Hydro application had already gone through. Um, they weren't going to reverse the Fortis application after they already passed the BC Hydro one. But here's the horrible part. I was actually allowed to ask Fortis questions on cost of wired versus wireless. And my questions were this. They said, this meter's cheaper if we do this wirelessly. And I said, my questions to Fortis through the BC Utilities Commission were this. Please incorporate the cost of the blanket radiation of municipalities, infrastructure, buildings, agriculture, economy, and everything that there is. And these insured losses incorporate those into those costs. Why the BC Utilities Commission's allowed them not to respond to that is going to be for them to deal with. But that watercrest picture is this. We are not compatible with those frequencies. So when they talk about Kelowna, BC, or Fortis, BC, blanketing 17,000 square kilometers, you see that watercrest experiment? It's going to kill everything on the planet. The idea that this is an exposure code uh, based on a six minutes exposure for a full-grown man. Do you know what the exponent po a report uh, people said regarding pollinators and bees? When I here I, here I questioned, uh, cross-examined uh, William Bailey, uh, uh, disgusting, disgusting ex uh, 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 experts, to, for this guy to say to me, they adapt. Can you imagine that? I don't know how much a bee weighs compared to a 200-pound man, but they adapt. But here's the important thing for people to understand with this, and people better understand this. There will be no economy when you kill things. There will be no money. There will be no food. There will be no life. You cannot do this. 
Imagine me representing to Washington State elected officials and the water commissioner that these radio frequency EMFs will knock the foliage off your trees and they will expose that ground to solar EMFs where we're documenting temperature over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I don't know about you guys, but guess what? Fish don't live in that. There's nothing that lives in that. So people better pay attention to this. And here I'm going to give some credit here. And here's the horrible part. People need to understand what Allison and the Citizens for Safe Technology and all these groups, all your hands and the disrespect that these professionals have got is because governments, for whatever reason in the world, entrusted these utilities and they bypassed all due process where when we have a building code change, it takes years. We don't just entrust somebody to put up development someplace. And we did this to warn them. Now they're going to have their liabilities related to this. It's disgusting. It means end of earth. And I don't say that to be nice to people. Even when people said to me, when you first heard about this, what did you want to do? And I said, leave. But then here's my father saying, who's going to speak for those children? And what is your job? And so that's an important part with this. You can't I get do that. I, I get you're angry. And I don't blame you a bit. You know, there's a lot of people that are very, very, very angry. And, you know. Allison, I just want to say this for, for real. I consulted at that. And when I say I, I'm talking about in our professional capacity. To be cleared after 9-11, to consult on international security issues, and to be uh, uh, consulting at that level, guess what? To report to Health Canada, the defense minister, the prime minister, these lazy, incompetent professionals that if this were done in a military application, it would be an act of war. And All for right. them to ignore Jerry Flynn, for Ford's lawyers to effectively dismiss him, here's a, here's a commander, here's a military commander, and Ford's just said, hey, Jerry cruises the internet. Here's a guy with 21 years experience with NATO exercises, and these guys dismiss him in their absolute ignorance. There are no circumstances yeah. where we electrocute a fetus, and that's what these are doing. Is they put you in an electrical circuit, and, and can I just touch on this basically, too, because here's what medicine wanted to know from me. Electro-hypersensitivity. Uh, first off, I'll tell you this. The Auditor General's office sent us all the environmental petitions and said, show us something we haven't heard before. Show us something else. And guess what? Dr. Havis' petition, 253, had everything in it, which was that deck phone study. But Dr. Havis isn't an electrical professional, so couldn't explain this. And I read this petition, and I watched Health Canada just effectively dismiss her. When Dr. Havis said that deck phone study is reporting altered brain wave activity at 0.1 of 1 microwatt. And then as you start to ramp up the power density, uh, the, the damage got uh, uh, more intense. Well, the bottom line is you put them under more electrical load. You're getting electrocuted more, and that's why you're going to have more damage. Gotcha. Okay. I, I, I get it, you know, and, and the thing is, too, that there's a lot of dismissal going on. Why did the Royal uh, Canadian, uh, Royal Society edit you out of the Safety Code 6 revision, okay? Well, you know, here, here again, when you say, you know, sometimes, listen, my opinion isn't popular, here I can tell you this, I have actually slapped an apprentice off an electrical circuit, and when I said, when I tell him, I said, when I tell you don't touch that, do you know what that means? That means don't touch that. You know, I don't want to be talking to your mother and being responsible for killing you. So this is the importance of this. Now, when I talk about we've worked with industry for all this time, fire departments, all the above, were designed to help them save money, save insurance companies money, liability, liability, liability. When I report, our jobs is professionals is to report to our authorities having jurisdiction. If I come across some secret that's worth billions of dollars, like imagine this after 9-11, I actually had one group say, you could sell this to the military instead of giving it to them. And I said, well, that's a good thing for a patriot to do. We don't exploit anything. So when I report to Health Canada in my capacity, I'm telling you to duck. When we report to the Prime Minister in that capacity, we're telling you to duck. Now, here's the important part. I did a video pr presentation for the Royal Society of Canada because they're revising Safety Code 6. And it's about time because Safety Code 6 uses the same science standards as the whole entire world. Um, uh, Dr. Skolnikoff of the exponent group admitted under cross-examination that so uh, specific absorption rate is a dosage of electromagnetic radiation. Safety Code 6 is the same science as the FCC and everybody else. Now, when I report to the Royal Society of Canada, here's what we do for a living. They shouldn't take a bunch of 
Can I say dumbasses? <laughs> they shouldn't take a bunch of dumbass PhDs to dismiss me as a, as a government credentialed, nationally certified electrical professional, building engineering professional, thermal radiation professional, never mind as adjunct faculty for medical education. So what they did is, listen, these guys set this code up because they ramped up exposure. They just made it more and said, listen, there's no peer-reviewed science showing harm. Do you know what the peer-reviewed science is? It's called electricity. Mark Warren, BC, uh, BC, Fortis BC's engineer, said, Curtis, we're calling what you do as a hypothesis. And I said, electromagnetic induction is how you produce electricity. Is electric I, said, I said, you guys hypothetically produce electricity. And so here's the thing for the Royal Society of Canada. Now, I say this. The Royal Society of Canada put together that panel. They did that with Health Canada, and I don't quite frankly care why. The idea that these guys came up with that garbage, garbage revised report that said, listen, there's no harm, but by the way, causation's still missing. We left out the routers, the blanket radiation, and, and again, while this was going on, another reason they had to do this as well is while they're revising the code, here's the, here's the Prime Minister and Industry Canada selling the 700 megahertz frequency range because it's more penetrating. At the same time, they're revising safety codes. Here's Ontario spending $150 million to put Wi-Fi in kindergarten. With, with kindergarten children, here's, here is this blanket radiation of parks in, in Ottawa with Wi-Fi while they're revising well, they're, a code. They're doing that a lot of different areas. So a lot of different areas are getting blanketed free Wi-Fi, quote unquote. They're putting Wi-Fi in parks and all this type of thing. And one of the things that Barry Trower said in his interview, he said that the G4 is a combination of frequencies and a combination of pulsed frequencies that we have never tested on the human before. And he, as a microwave expert, said that uh, some of the frequencies that they're using in the Wi-Fi in schools and so on, those are the very frequencies they were using to damage the brain. So, you know, this is not a good thing to have this. And as well, I know you have been interviewed on Boil the Frog and so on. And, and uh, uh, Sebastian sent me an interview that, that Pat had done where she was talking about Wi-Fi in hospitals and the impact that is having on health. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here that are huge, just absolutely huge. And there are countries that are waking up. And when you were talking about the fact that people, uh, you know, it's going to be the end of life is, is what you said. And so, you know, when we're talking about that, we're looking at a situation where you know, Barry Trower said, we're not going to have enough manpower because already we have reduced our ability to reproduce healthy babies by 57.7%. So we are not going to have enough population, the countries that continue in this vein. And yet there are a lot of countries that are now realizing that Wi-Fi isn't necessarily the best bet. And they're looking for other solutions and they're taking Wi-Fi out of schools and all this type of thing. This is fantastic. But those are the ones, those are the countries that are going to have the manpower. We are going to be, he said, like uh, the UK was after the World War II, where they didn't have enough people for bus drivers and so on. This is important stuff. Now, you have done something else. You were called in as an expert witness to a case in LA, in the LA school board. And there was a teacher who I saw a video of, which was profound. She had health effects that were huge. She was hospitalized twice from her uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And she had students in her class that were bleeders. They were bleeding through their nose. They were also bleeding through their ears. So, you know, students are definitely being affected. Now, they listened to you as an expert witness. They listened to what you had to say from an electrical point of view, not a biological point of view, not looking at peer review studies that, you know, where they try to plant seeds of doubt by having industry studies that show there's no harm and so on and trying to get more of those paid for studies to stack up against the other studies, you know, that are done by non-funded people. So tell me, you were listened to. They actually gave accommodation to that teacher to put her into a classroom that didn't have Wi-Fi in it. Can you tell me about what you said to them, about what your, your expert witness was on that case? Well, you can imagine when it comes to, when it comes to Wi-Fi, when it comes to a wireless circuit, here's the important part of it. 
you know, you have to consider the start to the finish. You've got to consider in a classroom, you've got to consider the router. You've got to consider the laptops or the whatever I, devices you're using. You've got to consider you've got blanket radiation because if you didn't have blanket radiation, students wouldn't be able to go online. Teachers wouldn't be able to go online. Now, the reason we would wire computers for this is so we can confine all of that information to a cable where it's supposed to be important. Here's the reality uh, 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 with Los Angeles. First off, it was the teacher, first off, uh, and, and her husband uh, is, a, is an intensive care. I think he works in ICU as a, a nurse at Cedar sinai But here's the other thing as well. Their kids were sick from the smart meters first. Then we got into discussion about uh, uh, schools and her being a teacher. And again, we did this specific to the liability for the teachers, for the schools, for the students, and all the above. What you've done is... You're, we, all we did was substantiate an electrical circuit. You've got a router. You've got, the, you've got the laptops. You've got the children. They're inside a wire. They are part of that circuit. Now, worst part is you're not, they're not just being used for their conductivity because as we blast these frequencies around, you're also blasting that information from, to, through them. And one of the reasons why when they talk about people being sensitive, whatever, when I talk about that lineman being killed, Here's that live line. Here's that dead line. They're running parallel to each other. He makes a mistake or somebody makes a mistake. It induces that dead line. It kills him dead. Here's the thing with this when we explain this to doctors. If he would have been perpendicular to the field, he might not have felt anything at all. So when they talk about people being sensitive, just your orientation to the fields can change that, the size and all the above. So what we did is we qualified this electrical mechanism, that causality, and when it comes to the biological plausibility side of this, imagine the specific absorption rate. When I cross-examined uh, Dr. William Bailey, I said, what's the voltage of a cell? He said, minus 70 millivolts. I said, how many frequencies uh, associated with the human body? And I said, and where is that? And he said, oh, I don't know if that information's anywhere. Without understanding, alarm bells are already going off. I said, where is that electrical and bioelectrical information in your uh, risk assessment report for, for Forest BC? It's not in there. Where is it in safety code 6? It's not in there. You can't leave frequencies out of an electrical equation. You can't leave biological information out of that electrical equation. And that's what we substantiated in those schools. But also for this, to warn the schools that those frequencies going through walls will compromise uh, the building structure, the building structures, fire separations, uh, building integrity. And, and, and on top of this, these frequencies going through walls in labs. Imagine this even to represent this. These EMFs going through walls of labs. Imagine working in a school with this flammable fluid here, depending on what you're wearing. What if somebody's wearing a sweater? Now, I've heard about people actually with these EMF issues, and it's just, I laughed at one time, and the guy said, it's not funny. He said, my parents are discharging because this EMF load, and then all of a sudden, bang, bang, sparks are happening. That will set off an explosion in the lab, and not only that, that will blow up refineries, gas plants. We wire those to be explosion-proof for all particular reasons. Okay, gotcha. Now, one of the things that Dr. Samuel Milham was telling me, he was saying, you know, after you worked on the computer and stuff like that, he, saying, he was telling me that grounding, uh, you know, with the ground wire into the ground of, of your your three-prong outlet into the lower prong, that that's not necessarily the best idea because so much of the stray voltage that's going back into the ground and stuff like that is coming back up. And so and so he said one of the things he said that I could do after working on the computer for so many hours is just hang on to it. He said, stand on a piece of tin foil for two minutes. Or, you know, somebody made me uh, just a, a, a aluminum sheet, just a little piece of sheet metal, and I just hang on to it. I put my hand on that, and I just hold on to that sheet metal for, for uh, you know, a couple of minutes, and that discharges it from me. And we're sort of, like, getting time to, to wrap up, but I do want to hear about this important thing that you've been working on for the past 24 hours that you pulled an all-nighter to work on and so on. What was that? Well, here, here's the unfortunate part of all of this. And, again, here's what I want people to understand with this, because I've had people call me and say, you know what, your opinion, you're this. And I said, do you think electricity is my opinion? Do you think engineering is my opinion? We did this specifically to warn them of liability. If we were, when we work for Syncrude, isolating electrical problems, we do this so the place doesn't blow up so they can avoid liability. When we do this with fires, we do this to avoid liability. 
Once you get that liability, guess what? Too darn bad. It's yours to have. Now, here's the important part with this. Our job is, is to report to our authority having jurisdiction. Now, when we tell the Pope, the Premier, the President of the United States, don't touch that wire, you know what that means? Don't touch that wire, because you're going to be in a lot of trouble when you do that. The fact that they just dismissed that is, up, is, is for them to do. Canada had passed on the information that their professionals passed on. The World Health Organization would have reported uh, uh, these radio frequencies as carcinogenic May 31st of 2011. So, Curtis, mm -hmm. you are involved in some things that are pretty interesting. And you are going to put in your bio material that people are going to be able to look at as this becomes more available for disclosure. So one of the things right now is that you're, you're really, you have shown causality in 2010, and now it hasn't been acted on. It didn't get passed on. It sort of got buried in Health Canada. And this is information, as you pointed out to me, that will change the way that the World Health Organization categorizes it as a possible carcinogen, as a B2 carcinogen, which is, you know, along the lines of DDT and arsenic and this type of thing. But what your information that you gave in 2010, that's going to like absolutely switch things over and there are there's a movement underway and so on but why show your cards before the end of the poker game so once that does happen right you're going to give us this information and we're going to put it in your bio uh, right? you're, 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 you're going to get the information here's the important part to what you just said and what we've talked about with this and what's going on right you can imagine the the here's the state of nevada they've had smart meter fires and deaths related to this so the state has actually ordered uh, the PUC to supply uh, information regarding this program, what's going on. So we've actually given information for that. State of Michigan, state of Maine, California, across the board, working with all of them because they're insurers. We talked about insurers. When people said, Curtis, do you think insurers are going to do anything about this? And I said, do you think insurers will take the losses? They will take their organs and sell them. Um, insurers aren't going to take this, and that's the best part is that insurers, industry, auditor generals, uh, these, these, these groups are being informed. Professional engineers across, professional engineers need to be informed because they're insured for errors or omissions. IEEE members need to be, get ready because they're insured for errors or omissions, but they allowed this to go forward. So guess what? They're going to have some incredible liability. But there's going to be precedent-setting information regarding this. These frequencies will not go through or an act of war is applied. You can't do that. You can't. Imagine even when we talked about Kelowna. Fortis admits they're going to blanket the area, blanket the valley. Do we have any people with pacemakers in Kelowna? Wow. People with yeah. pacemakers are told to stay out of an electromagnetic field. Fortis there, BC is taking the electromagnetic field to their home. Or imagine this with Jerry Flynn. You've seen how far apart the houses are here. Jerry yeah. Flynn, when I'm listening to him cross-examine the utility, they said, We're, our network goes house to house. He said, what's the range of a meter on a house? They, as much as they tried to wiggle around it, he kept after them. The meter on a house is going to have a range of two to three kilometers. Ouch. Each That's house. So you imagine this going back and forth and this, this horrible thing going on. And so listen, it's not okay. going to happen. Municipalities are not going to sit by. The Fortis application is going to be dealt with. The city of Cologne is going to be jumping into this. The auditors, they're going to go to jail. Okay, okay, I hear you, and uh, we'll see if that happens, when that happens. In the meantime, we're wrapping up. Do you have a final comment? Do you have something, a, a takeaway from all of this? Something sweet and simple that you want to tell people? Well, I don't know if it's going to be sweet and simple, but I'd like to, you can just decide out of this what you want to put forward. I want to apologize and... Uh, and, and, and to Ole Johansson and to the Carpenters and uh, to all these professionals I don't even know uh, for the disrespect that you've been given through this issue and effectively dismissed. You know, hearing about Ole Johansson's department uh, uh, being minimized at the Karolinska Institute, imagine that. The Karolinska Institute didn't know that this blanket radiation was going on. So they need to listen to this video and they need to contact us because Ole's department needs to be incredibly enhanced because here's the reality. It is Joan Moffat, who is a biologist, that, that uh, taught BC medical professionals this, listening to her in Penticton. Now, you imagine this. Safety Code 6 actually says this, and the purpose of the code, 
The purpose of the code is to protect people. The second part of the code says we want to reduce induced currents. As soon as an electrician reads that, you do this. Uh-oh. Ohm's law is this. Volts is equal to current times resistance. So when they talk about inducing currents, you're increasing cellular voltage. Point two millions of one volt change uh, in voltage changes, changes white blood cells. Dr. Bailey admitted under cross-examination that your neurological, your hormonal, and immune systems all work together and that these frequencies trigger nerves. Okay? We've got to do a better job with this all the way along. You can't hurt babies. Congratulations to those guys. And what I want people to know is this. We apologize. You need to report to your insurers. The frequencies are illegal as applied. And here's something regarding a police action. You can decide what you want to do with this. In Naperville, Illinois, they arrested some homeowners uh, for interfering with people installing those meters. If the police departments understood that these guys, these utilities, are blasting EMFs across people's property line, you're effectively tasing them. You're effectively electrocuting them, and that is illegal. You can't do that. So people need to know that, hang on, there's so much coming to help you with this, with the incredible work that everybody's done. The Integrative Health Forum is an international accredited uh, medical education uh, process, and I can tell you this with my background. It is a humbling part for these 14,000 licensed professionals to put together education programs and allow us to submit information for that. But I want you guys to know help is coming for you, but for lawyers, causations found. You guys, big ching ching for all you guys here. I heard in Michigan uh, they've got 29 uh, uh, cell phone tumor cases where they're going after $100 million each. What is, seven, what is uh, uh, all the people in 17,000 kilometers worth in multi-million dollar lawsuits? So you guys need to get together because guess what? Causation is found. You guys don't have to prove it. The peer-reviewed science is called electricity. You need to stop this thing today. Okay, everybody. You have it from Curtis Bennett, the journeyman electrician. And he he's providing causation from an electrical point of view. And, you know, electricity is pretty basic. It doesn't require a lot of peer review studies. So there is hope. Curtis, you're one whew, dynamite, intense man. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that you've taken on this job. Uh, you know, it's, it's a volunteer position that you're doing. You're really out there and you're doing it. And I thank you so much for it. And I know that our listening audience really got an eye opener with this uh, incredible you know, interview. So thank you. Thank you very much. You, 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 that fire information, that forest fire that you saw, Gordon yes. Campbell's office, the premier of BC, edited uh, that out of a public fire inquiry because it embarrassed him. And that's where this stuff got started. And I say that again. I'm accountable for what I say. So you just include that and let's get him. Okay, thank you well, so thank much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to call it a wrap. And uh, it's really appreciate your time.